I told you last time, enough was enough. But Jimmy, you know how deep this goes. We can't just walk away. I understand, but we can't keep risking our legs like this. It's not worth it. Please, you know the history we had together, the things we've been through. We can't just let it all go. I loved her, but she broke my heart. This doesn't change a thing. All right, all right. We'll do this one last mission, but remember, we need to do it carefully. We can't afford any slip-ups. I hear you. I'll make sure it's done right, but after this, it's over. No more involvement with the Sultan. We're done. Agreed. Let's make sure this is the last time. We can't keep dancing with danger forever. Yes, it's about time to put this behind us. For good. All right, let's get this done. Stay safe out there, Jimmy. You too. Take care. As Jimmy walked down the dimly lit streets towards the bar, the night enveloped the city in a shroud of mystery. The street lamps cast a soft, golden glow that danced playfully on the wet pavement, reflecting the faint, distant shimmer of neon signs. Shadows clung to the edges of buildings, concealing the secrets lurking within. The street itself was a mix of old and new, a testimony to the evolving nature of the city. Cracked sidewalks lined with weathered brick buildings told stories of the past, while the occasional sleek, glass-fronted structure hinted at the city's aspirations for the future. Despite the late hour, the street was not devoid of life. Figures huddled in small groups, their murmurs and laughter creating a discordant symphony that blended with the distant jazz music seeping from the bar ahead. As Jimmy pushed open the weathered door of the bar, a wave of warmth and a cacophony of sound enveloped him. The interior was a dimly lit expanse of worn wooden floors and scuffed leather boots, all illuminated by the soft amber glow of hanging pendant lights. The aroma of aged whiskey and stale cigarette smoke lingered in the air, intermingling with the rich earthy scent of damp wood. The bar itself, a long polished wooden counter, was manned by a burly bartender with a no-nonsense demeanour, wiping down glasses with a well-practised hand. Behind him, rows of gleaming liquor bottles stood like sentinels, their colourful labels catching the dim light and casting an iridescent glow over the area. As Jimmy made his way through the lively bar, the clinking of poker chips and the murmur of intense concentration caught his attention. He approached the table where a group of men were engrossed in a high-stakes game, the tension palpable in the air. Come. Join us, buddy. One of the players called out, a mischievous glint in his eye. It could be your lucky day to win. Another chimed in. Jimmy paused for a moment, his gaze sweeping over the group. His eyes met with the gaze of a man with a stubbled jaw and a weathered face, who leaned back in his chair, a wry smile playing on his lips. Ah, barkeep, pour this man a drink. We're going to take all his money. <laughs> the bartender glanced over at Jimmy and gave a knowing nod. Pop down, old Bodo, and leave the poor man alone. We all know you keep an extra king and queen up your sleeve. Osvaldo, a wiry man with a flashy grin, shot a mock scowl at the bartender. You ruin all the fun, you sleazy rat. You're lucky my boss isn't out the front to make a mess of you. Glimpsing a momentary respite in the camaraderie, Jimmy offered a small smile. Gentlemen, I appreciate the offer, but I have better things to do than play cards right now. Suit yourself, man, the player across the table shrugged, his focus quickly returning to his hand. Jimmy approached the bar, his eyes scanning the worn countertop as he leaned against it. The bartender glanced up from wiping a glass and offered a nod of acknowledgement. Hey, thanks for saving my wallet back there. The bartender's eyes crinkled in the corners, the hint of a smile tucking at his lips. Don't mention it, man. What can I get for you? Pausing for a moment, Jimmy shifted his weight and looked around the bustling room. <sighs> Nothing to drink, sorry. I'm, uh, I'm looking for somewhere a bit more private. I can make a phone call. It's a bit noisy out here, you see. Do you have a back room or something I can step into for a moment? The bartender leaned in slightly, a hint of wariness in his eyes. We, we do, but you'd be better off stepping back outside. There's some sort of meeting going on back there. Don't think they're the kind of sort that want to be interrupted. Jimmy nodded, acknowledging the advice. I'll, uh, I'll take note of that, thank you. His gaze shifted towards the back of the bar. 
The bartender resumed his work, polishing the glass with a practiced hand. Take your time, friend. Just don't get yourself into any trouble back there. With a tap of his hand on the bar, Jimmy offered a slight smile before turning away, his footsteps carrying him towards the back of the building. As he walked, he couldn't shake the feeling that the bartender knew more than he let on, a sense of intrigue mingling with the gravity of the mission. The atmosphere changed as he walked deeper into the bar. The air was heavy with the scent of aged wood, spilled alcohol and hushed conversations. Deep crimson wallpaper adjourned the tattered jazz posters lining the walls, capturing the essence of an era long past. Dimly lit sconces cast elongated shadows that danced with the flicker of their flames, adding to the allure of mystery. As Jimmy approached the door that led to the back room, a series of voices and murmurs sweeped through the cracks, hinting at a clandestine gathering. He couldn't help but wonder what awaited him on the other side, and he paused for a moment, trying to decipher the voices and discern the nature of the gathering he was about to intrude upon. As Jimmy pressed his ear against the door, the voices from within grew more distinct. A low, gruff voice spoke with authority, cutting through the murmur of the others. Well, as we agreed, by million dollars in cash. Don't you just love money, Barry? I do, ma'am. I, I, I sure do. Be a good boy now and make sure it's all there. Her words were laced with a subtle threat that sent a shiver down Jimmy's spine. The door handle felt cold in his hand, and with a hesitant breath, he pushed it open slightly. The light from the back room spilled into the corridor, revealing a room filled with people. The conversation was suddenly interrupted by the sharp voice of someone who seemed to take issue with Jimmy's presence. Hey. You aren't allowed to be back here. Startled, Jimmy quickly turned around and his eyes met the furious gaze of a burly man, Osvaldo, who seemed ready to pounce. In the split second that followed, Jimmy's instincts kicked in, prompting him to raise his arms in a defensive stance. But before he could react, the heavy wooden chair from behind him swung with an alarming force, crashing into the side of his head. A jolt of excruciating pain shot through him as he stumbled backwards his vision blurring as he struggled to regain his bearings. Amidst the chaos, the distinct sound of high heels clicking against the floor drew closer. Jimmy's senses were heightened, allowing him to perceive the approaching figure before his vision fully returned. Through a haze, he made out the silhouette of a woman, her presence commanding yet enigmatic, her movements fluid and calculated. Heart pounding in his chest, he attempted to push himself up, but a sharp, stinging sensation in his temple sent waves of dizziness crashing over him. He could hear the muffled sound of a tongue clicking in disapproval. Oh, Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy. What the, the air around her seemed to thicken with an intensity that made it hard for Jimmy to draw a breath. With a ringing in his ears and pain pulsating through his skull, he struggled to comprehend the gravity of the situation as darkness crept into the edges of his consciousness. As Jimmy moaned, his fingers grazed the gritty texture of dirt beneath him. Panic set in, propelling him to scramble to his feet, his hands brushing through the loose soil. The ground felt uneven with a rough terrain seeming to shift and change with each desperate movement below him. What on earth is this place? His voice echoed and reverberated, as if bouncing off invisible walls that enclosed him. The persistent ringing in his ears amplified the disorientation blurring the boundaries between reality and the surreal landscape of his subconscious. A chilling laughter, seemingly originating from all directions at once, encircled him, seeping into the darkest corners of his mind. The echoes of his own desperate plea, amplified and distorted, coming back to him as if taunting him to his very essence. The laughter seemed to toy with his vulnerability, teasing him with a sense of foreboding that refused to be ignored. The ground shifted beneath his feet alternating between soft dirt and unforgiving stone. Each step was a leap of faith into the unknown. 
as though the very fabric of the dream world conspired to keep him trapped within its ethereal grasp. Suddenly, the darkness gave way to a dimly lit chamber, its contours barely discernible in the faint light, the air heavy with anticipation, and his footsteps resonated through the expanse. Despite the overwhelming sense of foreboding, Jimmy couldn't shake the feeling that there was no turning back from this surreal journey into the unknown depths of his own mind. He pressed forward, his cautious steps echoing in the vast emptiness. The chime of a bell seemed to guide him, urging him to continue this path. Despite the eerie silence that enveloped the chamber, his breath hitched as he approached the open door, the rhythmic beat of his heart keeping in time with the unsettling tune that resonated from the darkness beyond. The room seemed to transform around him, taking on a surreal quality that defied all logic, the walls pulsating with an otherworldly rhythm that matched the chaotic tune of the unseen pianist. Jimmy's footsteps faltered as he struggled to maintain his balance. Embrace the melody, Jimmy. A voice murmured. Embrace the melody, Jimmy. Let the music guide you. Let it wash away the burdens that bind you. Jimmy's mind churned with conflicting emotions, the allure of the unknown pulling at him like a powerful undertow. He wavered his resolve, tested by the seductive promises that hung in the air, like ripe fruit waiting to be plucked. Amidst the surreal spectacle, a memory flashed before his eyes a fleeting glimpse of the faces of those he had once sworn to protect. Their voices echoed in the recesses of his mind, a reminder of the duty that had become of his life's anchor, grounding him in the face of uncertainty. With a deep breath, he shook off the enchanting grasp of the dream world, steeling himself against its relentless pull. No, I can't lose myself to this illusion. The surreal world began to unravel around him, he felt a sense of determination well within him, a fierce resolve to break free from the clutches of the dream world and return to the tangible reality that awaited him. With a determined step, he pushed through the disintegrating illusions, each stride carrying him closer to the threshold of the waking world. The voices of Rian rose in a crescendo of desperation, their cries growing increasingly frantic as he neared the edge of the dream world's grasp. And with one final surge of willpower, he broke free, his body jolting as he found himself once more in the familiar embrace of the bar. Gasping for air, he steadied himself against the bar counter. <sighs> Where are they? He looked around frantically, with a plea of hope that the Sultan was still present. They're long gone and they left you for dead. How about I pour you that drink now? No, no. They can't be gone. I need to finish the mission. This was supposed to be it. I was going to be free. Get away. 